How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. Back to get another review. Fucking Russian Imperial Stout Time. Not just Russian Imperial Stout Time. Bourbon Barrel Aged. Russian Imperial Stout Time in the form of Grist House Brewings. The Siberian Highway. Um, yeah, Grist House. I actually visited them um, October 2015. And this was the first beer. Well, I shouldn't say that. The first beer I ever had from them was their Black and the USSR, which is their Russian Imperial stat that this, I'm pretty sure, is based off of. Um, and uh, I was kind of like, damn, man. I'll dig it. I was out there to actually visit uh, Dennis from Dry Log and hit a bunch of breweries. And this uh, Grist House ended up being, they were open just a bit about a year when I visited there. And I was kind of impressed. Um, and at the time, I was actually doing my old radio show. And I was like, hey, man. And we're always looking for having new breweries on. And then I talked to one of the brewers that was mulling around there. And he's like, oh, yeah, definitely, man. He's like, uh, that's something I'd be interested in. You know, not too long after, I just kind of stopped doing the, the radio show. And that was it. You know, I haven't been back to Pittsburgh since. We don't see the Grist House stuff around here. But, um, you know, a couple months ago, they kind of reached out on Instagram and said, hey, man, can we send you some beers? And I was like, yeah, or whatever. And they, uh, up until now, they sent me uh, two canned beers, two Hop Forward beers. Um, and, uh, but... They actually did a uh, event in Philadelphia uh, called uh, it was like a tap takeover of Pittsburgh and Philly kind of thing. And I'm just starting to do my podcast again, and I said, "Hey man, I'm like you, you up for an interview?" And they're like, "Hell yeah, dude!" So I went down there and kind of interviewed Brian Eaton from um, from Grist House, and you know he greeted me with this one. It's like, "Hey man," and he just kind of hand shook me with one of these, and I was kind of like, "Fuck yeah, motherfucker!" And, uh, because it's kind of a full circle thing. I like it when it comes that way. I'll be at a bit barrel aged full circle, but full circle nonetheless. So, story time. Let's go into beer time, which is going to be even longer story time. Um, yeah, what do we have here? Grist House Brewing. Uh, it's Siberian Highway. Russian Imperial Stout, Asian Bourbon Barrels. This is uh, bottled on January, February, March 26, 2017. This is January 2018, so almost a year. Uh, it's about a 109 to 700. On the back here, it says Siberian Highway, also known as the Siberian Route, was a famous trading route connecting Russia, Siberia, and China. To honor this famous highway, we added generous amounts of cinnamon, cocoa nuts, vanilla beans, and coffee to our already big and bold barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout. 9.3% alcohol by volume. Done and done. I kind of like this label. I like the label. label. Let's put it this way I like their labeling. This one is one of my favorite because it's a bit more kind of non-graphic, a bit more kind of minimal. But there's this, it, it looks like this bottle's been carried around and knocked around because it's like the label's kind of all fucked up here and it's kind of ripped down here a little bit. And that kind of makes me like it even more. Um, so yeah, there you go. Beer. Let's pour this in this big ass gigantic freaking glass and see what she's got to offer. Okay. Yeah, so let's see. Let's do a little tilty for you here. Perfect. Look at that. Look at me actually pouring a beer correctly. It's like the world is caving into itself. Um, yeah, what do we have here? Index finger. Just about where I like my coffee to look. Gravity fine creaminess, super tight compact bubbles, and she'd be dark. You know? Big bold Russian Imperial stout. So she looks the part so far. See, get a nose on her. It smells pretty tasty. I'm getting these kind of like um, soft chocolate vibes, almost like milk chocolate vibes. Get a little bit of roasted malt, a little bit of bittering on it. Um, definitely getting like a barrel character in there, a little bit of charry woodness. Not getting a ton of bourbon. Not getting a ton of like cinnamon. I've been having a really hard time with cinnamon lately. Um... I kind of I think I figured out why we'll get to that later probably, but I'm not getting a ton of cinnamon. Sure, I'm getting vanilla vibes, but that could be anywhere from the bourbon to the wood to you know what do you want me to say? That's it. So definitely getting that kind of chocolate vibes, malt vibes. I'm definitely getting a kind of smoked cherry wood vibe and a bit of vanilla. Bourbon, cinnamon, not too much in the nose. Let's dive in and see what she's got in the taste. Cheers. Way more sweet than I thought she'd be based off of those. Not too sweet, but sweet. Um, yeah, that's fun though. Because you get that added component of the vanilla with the bourbon. 
it kind of makes sense for it to be that sweet. So you're definitely getting a vanilla in here. Um, didn't pick it up that much in the nose, but you're definitely getting in there. The beer's still there. That's always a fucking awesome thing. A lot of these beers that tend to have a lot of bits and pieces thrown on them, tend, people tend to get a little heavy-handed with the spices and stuff like that. In this, even though the sweetness is big, the vanilla is big, the bourbon comes off sweet big and not boozy big, um, it kind of makes sense in this beer. Um, there's a bit of bittering floating around in there from uh, the malt. There's like a bittering kind of stringency a little bit from the malt, but then I think you get a little bit of kind of like savory kind of bittering thing from the char of the barrel too. Cinnamon. Let's talk about it. It's in there. But I believe I'm fucked up with cinnamon for a while. I've realized this. It used to be a really easy kind of descriptor for me to kind of pick out. I've noticed what these kind of big barrel aged beers that kind of tout cinnamon have been really fucking falling short in cinnamon lately, and I'm kind of curious as to why. I'm a weird uh, creature. I like patterns. Um, you probably notice that in my reviews, they usually follow the same script. Um, I try not to be that way, but I am. Um, but anyway, uh, I've been eating oatmeal uh, for a long time for breakfast. That's all I eat is just a bowl of oatmeal. And about like a year or so ago, I started adding cinnamon. I just got this tub of cinnamon and just add a little bit, a little bit, a little more, a little more. Until morning where I realized I'm adding so much fucking cinnamon to the fucking oatmeal that I'm basically eating a little bit of oatmeal in my cinnamon. I think that's really fucked me up with cinnamon. As of late, I just think I'm, you know, it's just like anything. You expose yourself to it so much, it's hard to detect it. So I need to kind of kick that cinnamon so I can bring it back into the beers so I can enjoy it. But personal anecdotes aside, it's fucking tasty beer. It's got a nice density to it. Balance is nice. I think the age has done it a bit of justice for as far as booziness. Sure, 9.3. It's not a big beer. But the amount of bourbon in here, where you're getting that big, rich, kind of bourbony sweetness that's leaning towards kind of like a cherry kind of bourbon liqueur as opposed to like a whiskey, I think that has been tempered by time. And it's just, it's a big Russian Imperial stout with a couple bits and pieces going on in a really nice way. Um, it, you know, it, it's the full circle thing again. That kind of just tickles me pink to actually go into a brewery and have the first beer you have, but have it again, albeit in a different form. It's just kind of cool. Not just because you're drinking it, because it's as good as you remember. Again, different beer, there's barrel aging going on, but the fact that it's just tasty kind of reinforces you that you're like, okay, I kind of knew a couple things back then. Just a couple though. But yeah, tasty stuff. Well done. Uh, if I'm going to knock it for anything, I'd like, while the beer is definitely present, I'd like the beer to be a little bit beefier. So, uh, in my perfect world, this would be a 10.5, 11% beer. Just have the beer show a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And I think it would just be absolutely perfect. But again, we're talking about a year or so. Things change. Anyway, super tasty stuff. Delicious. And honestly, yeah impressive when you're talking about dealing with a lot of those bits and pieces kind of thrown out the beer. So let's talk about it. Is it one of the better Imperial Stouts, barrel-aged Imperial Stouts I've had as of late? Worthy of the conversation. Maybe on the outside looking in, maybe right on the inside looking in. It's nice, it's tasty, it definitely hits the spot. I'm absolutely fucking tickled pink to be drinking it, but I have had some that have done me better. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of great beers out there, so that's not a knock. It's more of a testament to how fantastic beers are out out there in the world um value availability don't know uh, it's a year old so it's an age beer so it's kind of poopy to even go like that but as far as this barrel agent program what they do and what they charge when they come out maybe somebody could drive me on that and leave you with if you like what we like this if you like russian imperial stouts if you like barrel aged stouts if you like vanilla and all those kind of spiced stouts not necessarily like chili spice but kind of spice stouts uh paste pseudo pastry stouts it's worth picking up, especially if you're in the pit, out Pittsburgh. Wait, listen. Pittsburgh is blowing up brewery-wise. Uh, you have some mainstays. Uh, if you like old-school beers, you can go there, and you can go to super old-school, like Iron City. You can go to, um, do you know what I mean, Penn Brewing. Uh, Church Brewing is like your classic old-school brew pub. You know, the beers might not be what a lot of people today kind of covet when it comes to beers, but it's a fun place to visit nonetheless. You have some old-school breweries kind of doing it right now uh, east end brewing makes one of the best barley wines in history of mankind that's their gratitude but the, you know they've been around for 20 or so years longer maybe even 
close to that. Let's put it that way. And then um, you have a lot of new schoolers. Uh, Drylog, one of my favorite breweries. You've watched me review their beers ad nauseum. Um, they're one of my favorite wild yeast breweries around. And then you have all these kind of new school breweries. Grist House, doing everything from like your cultures to um, red ales to, you know, dabbling in a bit of Belgian stuff to IPA stuff, old school and new school and, and Russian Imperial Stouts too. A bunch of like super high end, crazy IPA laden breweries, whether it be the Brew Gentleman or Dancing Gnome, stuff like that. There's a lot to offer. So, Pittsburgh is quickly coming up as a crazy good beer town. So, if you're ever in the area, check out Pittsburgh for beer and don't skip on Christ House. Sure, you know, those flash names like the new school breweries and stuff like that. But yeah, cool dudes. Go check out their interview I did. It'll be up bef by the time I post this, it'll definitely be up on our channel. And and uh, go check that out and uh, just to uh, see what they're all about because it's worth uh, worth giving a whirl. So there you go. Another review in the books. Uh, social medias. Massive beers. Gmail. Instagrams. Dot coms. All that stuff. Just type in massive beers. Uh, the podcast, Beer Massive. Beermassive.com. When I was talking about the interviews, uh, all your favorite uh, podcasting apps along with uh, Beermassive.com. Just go there and check it out. Fun stuff. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice big Russian Imperial style right now. Hope to see you next time. Cheers.